Uh, good evening, Ed. Hope you're well. Um, yes, I'm Tommy. Uh, I'm an artist from a performance collective called British Intervention. And uh, our question to you is this. What does a Trump slash Clinton presidency mean for, for activity within the NSA upon American citizens and its relationship with other intelligence agencies across the globe? Thank you. <laughs> Nothing good for either of them. Um, this is really the, the sad reality of our, our current election. Uh, we're not hearing anything meaningful about policy. Uh, nobody's talking about the Constitution, nobody's talking about rights, nobody's talking about the law. Uh, instead, we hear everybody talking about personalities, uh, individual criticisms, uh, talking about whether or not this uh, politician or that per politician can be trusted. When the reality of, you know, thousands of years of human civilization uh, indicates that no politician can be trusted and they should not ask us to do so. Don't ask us for trust. Uh, establish through your actions uh, why you should be supported. And this is, uh, you know, another thing historically that I fell down on pretty hard. Uh, when Barack Obama was uh, campaigning for president, uh, I was actually starting to believe uh, that he meant what he said. And maybe he would fix all of these things. He would end warrantless wiretapping in the United States, as he claimed he would do. Instead, he actually expanded it. Uh, he said that he would uh, investigate the Bush era abuses. He would have trials uh, and those who had broken the law, those who had actually committed war crimes, uh, would have their day in court. That didn't happen. As soon as he became president, he said it's time to look forward, not backwards. But you cannot have accountability without investigation. and Every investigation is necessarily backward looking. So what this demonstrated is the fact that even people who appear to be the most progressive uh, politicians that can be elected to office, once they are in office, uh, very quickly depart from that path. And that, again, is the necessary path of accountability. So what does it mean to have a government of extraordinary power with no meaningful accountability? This changes our society from periods uh, in, in the past, which were actually very dark periods, right, where we had very weak governments, very limited governments, whether we're talking, you know, feudal days or even before that. Uh, you know, life wasn't that great because there, wasn't, there weren't a lot of uh, protections that you could avail yourself to institutionally. But at the same time, there were not the same risks of abuse uh, because government simply wasn't uh, big enough to harm anyone. Now, that's not saying that we want to go back in the days of no government, right? I'm not trying to be an anarchist here. Uh, but we should consider the risks of governments that have wielded powers the likes of which history has never seen before. At the same time, they are entitled to a veil of secrecy the likes of which we've never seen before. This creates this dynamic that we see now in every single day of our lives just by you know looking at your phone and seeing the kind of ads that are being served to you they seem to know everything about your life every time you make a purchase all the ads suddenly uh, start to advertise the kind of thing that you were just looking into and those are companies right those aren't even governments this leads us leaves us in a status quo that is radically different from what we're used to we are used to a world of private citizens right and public officials, meaning the government knows very little about us, but we know an extraordinary amount about them because we have to police them. But now we're starting to live in a world and the next presidency will likely carry us very far into this world uh, of private officials and public citizens.